Hey everybody, it's Bishop Randy Morgan. I'm coming to you today from the Sanctuary of New Covenant Church of Atlanta, House of Prayer for All Nations. Today I wanna to talk to you for a few minutes about Revelation chapter six. Uh, I just wanna read from it and talk about it for just a little bit before I get started, let's pray. Father, thank you for everyone listening, everyone watching. I pray right now for each one of them. I pray that you give them supernatural, revelational insight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, a lot of people are very nervous about the book of Revelation, but when I teach on it, one of the first things, the very first thing I say is, is it's the book of Revelation, not the book of I'm trying to hide something from you. It's, it's meant to reveal. And we learn in the first chapter what the book of Revelation is meant to reveal. It's meant to reveal Jesus and his plans for his church. We learn in the first few chapters, the very first things, the atmosphere of heaven, what he plans for his churches, um, his church, his body, and multiple churches. And, and, and we have to be able to look into the book of Revelation and not just look way off into the future. I think that's one of the, the, the parts, I think that's what Satan has done with the book of Revelation. He's told everybody all of it's way off in the future, or, or way off in the past. There are two theories, main theories in the body of Christ. One of them is it's way off in the future. One of them it's way off in the past, fulfilled completely in 70 AD. And that's actually a, a doctrine in the body of Christ. Many people hold on to. And, or it's completely fulfilled way off in the future. So we, we have the book of Revelation of what was, and we have it for what will be, but very rarely do we ever hear anybody talk about the book of Revelation from the standpoint of what is. Over and over and over in the book of Revelation, we say, he is the one who was and is and is to come. And that's what the revelation is all about. And so I want to talk about what is about the book of Revelation. And I, I, want, to, there's a, I want to see what is in the first four seals that are broken when the lamb is given the scroll. I, there's so much. Go back and read it, Revelation 1 through 6. But I want to leap right into Revelation 6 because I believe there's something here that God wants to say to you today. In Revelation chapter 6, it says, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals. This is verse 1. What had happened right before this was there was a book that no one in heaven and earth was worthy to open, but the Lamb of God was worthy to open it. And we find that out in Revelation chapter 5. He takes the scroll, he opens it. We know this Lamb to be Jesus Christ. So he's opened the scroll. When we see scrolls throughout the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, when we see a scroll, we need to think one primary thing. That is the will of God being written. We should think along the lines of the Bible. We should think along the lines of, of spiritual scrolls, which are prophetic utterances. We should think uh, along the lines of, of God's will being written and received by people and being read. We see Jesus going into the temple uh, in the first days of his ministry. Some, many people say, how did Jesus launch his ministry? They think it was at his baptism and when he received the Holy Spirit. That's not when he launched his ministry. It's when he went into the temple and uh, the synagogue and unrolled the scroll and read from Isaiah. And he says, this has been fulfilled in your ears today. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach. That right there, Jesus used the scroll. So we see here that a scroll in heaven, the will of God, the written will of God, was sealed up and nobody could unseal it or break it open or reveal the will of God, what God wanted his church to see. But the lamb did. So he says, he opened the seal and I heard like the noise of a thunder, one of the four living creatures saying, come and see. So God wanted a human to see what was being revealed. And I looked and behold a white horse. So the first seal was broken and a white horse comes out and he who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him and he went out conquering and to conquer. Now that's the first seal. We have to ask ourselves, what is that about? Okay, so a, a, a scroll is broke open and all of a sudden out from the spirit realm runs this white horse and a person sitting on it that has a crown and a bow and he's going out to conquer and to conquer, conquering and to conquer. We ask, who is that? I believe that that is the Antichrist. I have a lot to say about this, but I'll sum it up like this. 
The Antichrist is not some guy named Damien from the movie The Omen that's coming with a stamp in his hand to stamp people with 666 on their forehead. That's not what it is. In the book of John, 1 John, we see the, that God spoke through the apostle John to the church and said, there are many antichrists already in the earth. The spirit of the antichrist is already present. Antichrist is, is exactly what it means. Antichrist. This is not about Starbucks and Christmas cups. <laughs> the, the Christ anointing that was on Jesus was there because of Isaiah 10, 27. This, uh, the anointing removes burdens and destroys yokes. The Christ anointing is to remove burdens and destroy yokes. So the Antichrist is a yoke creator and a burden placer. Okay, and, and I could go into a whole lot about why I believe this, but I'll, I'll just summarize it with this. You'll know a spirit by the company it keeps. Out from behind this horse runs uh, war, famine, and death. If the first horse was Jesus, the next three horses would have been peace, provision, and life. I could give you dozens of scriptures right off the top of my head right now that I could confirm that with, but I, I'm just not going to do it because there's not enough time. But we see this first spirit being revealed. Um, so we have to ask ourselves, why? Why is God revealing this? Why is there this sacred book and that, that God, through the Lamb, Jesus, breaks it open and reveals. Why are we seeing this? You, wouldn't you think it'd be something good and wonderful and precious and, and, and just, just sweet and all that? No. There's a war. And God wants you to be aware of it. As a matter of fact, he said through the Apostle Paul, I don't want you to be ignorant of Satan's devices. So when God is revealing things, the, one of the first things he wants to reveal to us after we're born again and filled with the Spirit is that there is a war going on. When, when he breaks open the seals and he begins to reveal things to us, he wants us to discern that there is an enemy. And, and I'm just going to cover the first horse for just a little while today. I'm going to make this a multi-part um, series about the breaking open. I, I feel like I need to prophesy this into some of your lives today. You've been ignoring the devil because you received bad counsel from people that said, if you'll just pay attention to God and ignore the devil, the devil will go away. That is not good counsel. The root word of ignorant is ignore. And, and God does not want us to be ignorant or ignore Satan's devices. He wants us to be aware of them. Why? Because Satan is still very much alive. He, he, he's not even sick. He's been defeated. He's absolutely been defeated, but he is at work in the earth. And so one of the first things that God wants to reveal to us after we fall in love with Jesus, we become born again, we live a new life, the Spirit of God overflows out of our life, and we begin to get revelation knowledge of who Jesus is. One of the first things he wants to direct our attention to is the kingdom of darkness and how it's at work and how we need to defend the people of God against it, how we can deconstruct the enemy's territory, how that we can go in and apply the cross of Jesus Christ into territories and areas. He wants us to go to war. He said, our war is not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of wickedness in heavenly places. If you are not aware of a warfare, then you are not as close to Jesus as you need to be. The closer you get to Jesus, the harder Satan's going to fight you. But not just you, the people around you, the people that you, you just want walk through Kroger and there's a war going on in the spirit. We need to understand this antichrist spirit is trying to place yokes on people, trying to place burdens on people. He's creating yokes and burdens. And we are the people of God anointed by Christ to remove burdens and destroy yokes. So why in the world, when, when in the heavenly realm, when we see this panoramic view of the throne of God and this glorious occurrence and all of, the, all of heaven's celebrates because the lamb took, takes this scroll and breaks it open and he's found worthy to break it. And that first seal is broken. And then all of a sudden we see a principality and a power. 
And we wonder why isn't God showing us something sweet and tender and, and all of that. It's because he loves us enough to reveal to us that there is a war and that we are called by God to deconstruct the kingdom of Satan, to come against it and to set the captives free. The spirit of Antichrist is very, very real and it's very much at work. You need look no further than your Facebook thread to see that Antichrist is at work in the earth today. And I'm not talking about a president of the United States. Right wingers said Obama was the Antichrist. Left, far left saying Trump is. It, people will say it's as far back as, you, as I can remember. I've heard presidents called the Antichrist. Quit looking for a human being to be the Antichrist and start looking at what really is. And it's a spirit that places burdens and yokes on people's lives to destroy them. The first thing that was revealed when the, the scroll was broken open in Revelation chapter 6 was this Antichrist. I know that it's not Jesus. Some people have argued that it was Jesus because he rode on a white horse. But if you go to the end of the book of Revelation in, in chapter 19, you see that, yes, Jesus wrote. He had a crown and he rode on a white horse. But he had a sword, not a bow and arrow. The sword of the Spirit is the weapon of Jesus. This bow and arrow is something, it shows a counterfeit. Like he looks almost like Jesus but he's got the wrong weapon. And that's the spirit of the Antichrist. It's, he, he, it looks like Jesus. It sounds like Jesus. If you're far enough away, it, it'll appear to be Jesus. But it ain't Jesus. This bow, a sword is meant to be in close proximity. A bow is from way away and hidden. And, and, and it's a tactic that's used to be subversive. It's, 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 it's not a sword. And Jesus carries the sword. And this other thing that looks almost like Jesus but isn't Jesus is the Antichrist. And it carries a bow. And we'll talk more about that in the coming weeks. But I just today, I want to talk about the first seal being broken. We need to be aware. God wants to reveal to us today where the spirit of Antichrist is at work. Where this anti-anointing, this, this burden-placing, yoke-creating spirit is at work. Because we are under Christ Jesus. We carry the banner of Christ Jesus. Burden-removing, yoke-destroying power. So we need to go in, find out where our assignment is. Let God break open the seal of our minds and, and the, the scroll of God so that we can see with discernment where the spirit of Antichrist is at work. So, Father, I pray for everyone listening and everyone watching. I pray, God, that we realize we are at war. And this is not for the mealy mouth. This is not for the, the, the weak. This is for those who grow strong by getting in the word of God. I pray for everyone listening and everyone watching, God, that we will move into that next season of, of breaking forth and, and destroying the works of the enemy. Jesus already destroyed the works of the devil. Now we have to enforce that destruction. We will not let Satan rebuild his strongholds. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, I'll see you next week. We'll talk about the second seal. Go ahead and read ahead if you want to. It's only a couple of verses for the second seal. I look forward to seeing you next week. God bless you.